Hello, it's Parm King, the Dungeon Master for Legends of Barovia, a Curse of Strahd campaign. And today I'm going to talk about lighting. Now, lighting in our real lives is really important. I mean, it can set a mood and an atmosphere, whether you're at a restaurant or in your home. It's important in movies and in, in theater. But it's also can be implemented really well in Foundry. Lighting can change the, the feeling and the atmosphere uh, very quickly. Now, Foundry's done an amazing job of using lighting and specifically designed it for battle maps. And as you know, if you've watched my channel, I like to make these theater of the mind maps. And what I'm going to show you is some tips and tricks using two modules, the dancing light and the FX uh, module for special effects and some little lighting tricks that I've made. I've got a couple of scenes here. There's theater of the mind scenes. I'm going to put a link down below on how to create theater of the mind scenes. But I'm going to specifically talk about lighting. I'm going to go through a couple of them here. The first one is the stone bridge. And what I wanted to do in the stone bridge was create the atmosphere of a setting sun. Our players have left the village of Barovia. They're about to cross the bridge and head in towards the Tesser pools. And I wanted to do two things. One is I wanted to create some fog and I wanted to make it look like the setting sun. Now this picture doesn't look that great. This is a static picture I found on the internet. And what I'm going to do here is uh, enhance it um, for my player's perspective. So the first thing I did, I'm, here's the FX module over here. I added in clouds. And the reason I like to use clouds rather than the fog effect in the weather effects is when you're using theater of the mind in this perspective, clouds kind of move like fog from this particular perspective. So I like to use the fog, uh, I mean, sorry, the clouds instead of fog. This this is does not have any dancing lights. This is just straight lighting, but I'm gonna show you something interesting here. So what I wanted to do is create the sun uh, setting in the, uh, in the valley there. And how did I do that? I wanted to create the ball of the sun and then kind of the, the sky getting all orange from, from dusk. Uh, and so the what you can do in here, and this does not use a module, this is just setting the emission angle. So the emission angle is 140 degrees and the rotation is 180. So think of the rotation as a compass with zero and 360 right straight down and 180 straight up. And so I created an angle at 140 and I rotated it to 180. So it's the, the it's uh, uh, angle of degree at 140 and it's facing a 180, which is the exact opposite of the 360 or, or zero. And I just set a color here. Um, you can change the light opacity a little bit in the darkness threshold. And what you're gonna see here is that the, the ball here is actually the sun. And you can change the size of that if you want, but let's see what it looks like. Here it is from the player's perspective. So now you can see it looks like a sun starting to set in the sky and then there's a, there's a glow of light. Now you can do the same kind of thing with the moon rise or the moon setting. It really changes the atmosphere and the feeling of the game. And it really allows you as the dungeon master to, to kind of set a tone and create this unique atmosphere for your players. The next one I'm going to talk about is a bookstore. I have a bookstore where my players are visiting and purchasing books. And this is again a static image from the internet that I found. And I noticed that you know, the, the, the books are kind of piled up in a higgledy-piggledy fashion. And I used two effects in this one. I'm using dancing lights and the FX module. The FX module I'm using in here is the embers. And then instead of it being fire embers, I describe this bookstore as kind of dusty. Um, there's a lot of books around. And so the embers are kind of like dust particles floating in the air and the, the sun coming through the window is kind of lighting up those little particles. For the uh, for the uh, lighting, I have an angle set here of the light, and I'll show you what angle I have. I have it as a 40 degree angle, and it's coming in at 40. So remember, if we look at the compass, if this is uh, uh, zero, this is 90, this is 180, um, between uh, 90 and zero is 40. So the rotation angle is at 40, roughly, 45. You can move that how you see fit. I was trying to line it up with, with the, the scene and the emission angle is uh, 40. The brightness radius is all the brightness. So I, I want all the brightness to come through here, unlike the setting sun. So let's see what this looks like 
from my character's perspective in the bookstore. I'm using dancing lights, I forgot to mention, and this is the fade effect. And I probably go in here and adjust this a little more, but you can see, if you look closely, you can see, I don't know if you can see the embers. There's little embers moving around in here. It's supposed to be the dust particles. Let me show you here in my the dancing lights. I used the fade effect, and I suggest for this, and I'll have to tweak it a little bit, is to get the light lighting a little closer to each other. You want it to fade a little, is kind of like sunlight sparkling through the room. I don't think my colors are exactly right, but I, I do think, I mean, it's going for what I'm trying to, to the atmosphere that I'm trying to create. And you can tell, I mean, just boom, a little bit of lightning, a lighting and the, uh, the little dancing lights and the atmosphere has changed quite a bit. Let's go to the next one. This is the uh, potion shop. It's another static image I find, found off the internet. Um, this is where the characters can come and buy some potions. But I noticed there's some candles in here, and I really want to create kind of a, a dark and kind of spooky potion atmosphere. The, the lady's going to sell potions. She's like a druid. She's, got, she's uh, using loot sheet again with this one. She's a merchant selling potions. Let's see, uh, before I show you lighting, let's see what the scene change feels like from the character's perspective. Wow, see the whole color of the atmosphere changes kind of an orange. The candles up here and over here are flickering a little bit. And really, you create a, a kind of a dynamic scene. There's almost a feeling of animation. It really kind of brings the scene to life. Just, just the lighting. So let's talk about the lighting in this particular one. Um, one of the things that you can do in your lighting is, first of all, set your bright radius when I do candles. I tighten up that bright radius. You can see it's just around the candle. And I make the, the dim radius really, really wide to kind of flood the room. And I kind of overlap them a lot. I'm using dancing lights in this one. I have the blur effects turned on. And I'm using fire. And when I use the fire, I use a the dim color is more orangey. And then the bright flickering color is going to be more of a, a whiter candle kind of light. Um, once you, One of the things that you can do is once you set this and you click on it, it's highlighted up there, you, you can hit Control C uh, and copy it and go somewhere, put your cursor somewhere on the map and hit Control V to paste it. And now you've, you've set the exact same one, you can paste them all over the map. So once you have your candle the way you like it, you can go ahead and paste them all over and it saves a lot of time. Let's go back and look at the character here. So this is just a flat picture, it looks nice. But man, wow, isn't that awesome? Setting the mood with a little bit of lighting. Let's go to our next one here. This is the blacksmith. It was another static photo I found on here. And I wanted to create kind of some fire coming out of that, that really hot area where he's been you know, uh, working on the anvil. There's an anvil here and he's got a sword, hot sword sitting in a bucket. So I can imagine maybe some steam coming off of there. But we're gonna talk about the lighting in here. I want to get this really hot looking. And so let's see first what it looks like from the player's perspective. I got a couple of the candles lit and you can see it's kind of lighting up in the in here. The coals are kind of lighting up the inside of this, this kind of kiln that the uh, that the blacksmith is using. The lighting effect in here that I used was I, I rounded out the light. This is again, it's an angle. It's a 90 degree emission angle. It's aimed at a, a 100, uh, 240 degrees, and I cut this angle specifically so you can see that it's just inside here. I wanted the the bright radius to fit inside of this kind of, uh, um, for lack of the word, you know, uh, kiln that he's using. And so again, let's take a look at this from the character's perspective. It really creates a dynamic effect. I got a little bit of a candlelight here, over here. I've kind of toned the darkness down a little bit because I thought it was a little bright for outside. I mean, they are in the city of Vallaki and here is my, uh, the blacksmith. Uh, let's go to the herbalist shop. This is kind of you know, this, if you look at this picture here, you can already see some of the special effects kicking in. And I just kind of wanted to, to turn it off to, to, to tell you first. Uh, let's see if I screw this up. I thought it was a really cartoony looking picture. It's not as good as some of the other photos, but I still really like this. And this is the herbalist uh, that's living outside of the village. They're, they're going to go there. There's some 
back, really cool backstory with her too. But I kind of like this. It was kind of a feeling, you know, she's living not in the village of Locke, kind of outside of it. She's kind of a hermit, druidish type character. They're going to go there, and there's a couple of things that she sells, but she's uh, going to be later on perhaps uh, an important character in this campaign. Um, I looked at the color, and I wanted the light kind of streaming in through this shop, and I wanted to give this shop a theatrical experience of some magic. And so I used in the in here the bubbles effect, and I made the density kind of low, moved the speed, and the scale was kind of small. And so I added that, and there should be a couple little bubbles floating around here. And you know, you can make them a little smaller. Maybe I'd make them a little smaller here. Uh, scale just a little smaller. Save changes. Um, and I wanted to have some just, you know, she's got some potions there in the background, some little bubbles. The next thing that I, that I put in here were the stars. And when I clicked on the stars, what I wanted to do was give it the color that kind of matched the room. So I kind of gave it a greenish greenish color in the stars and the density I kind of turned it down this way I made, I brought up the scale a little bit move the direction around and the speed just a little bit different and save that and now you should see some stars here's some star there's a star right here there's a star up here so there's some magic going on in here I mean the, the little bit of bubbles with a little bit of stars create kind of a, a magic feeling but here comes the lighting and I want to show you this from the player's perspective the lighting with the light streaming through the windows and so now I have got light streaming in through the windows I've got some stars and some bubbles and just that I've taken kind of a cartoony photo and with a little bit of lighting a little bit of special effects you've created a magical shop with some stars and uh, some bubbles and some lighting coming in through there and really what you're doing is you're creating this amazing experience for your players in these theater of the mind maps and I really like it because we can spend a lot of time you know, role playing, and they're not moving around. We're role playing and interacting, and they've got this common frame of reference, this theater of the mind map. It's now got a little bit of dynamic and theatrical effects. Let's look at the last one here, uh, which is the church. And this one uh, is, I think this one's really cool. I really like the lighting I did on this one. And this is the church in uh, Vallaki. Uh, and the players had just got there in the last session. And actually, what's really funny about this one is I made this one on the fly. And if you watch my on the fly video, uh, it's the last section of the video where I may actually make this map. I didn't put the lighting in when I made it on the fly. I made the uh, lighting later. So let's talk about the lighting in this one. This is really cool. So I found this really cool picture. This is the church here. And I added some fog in here. So the fog effect. I mean, the cloud effect already creates some really kind of gloomy and creepy atmosphere. But I saw this light coming out of the church, and I wanted to really highlight this light. And so I just want to show you first the perspective of the player. So when the players show up at the church outside of, of the, uh, the, the church, this is the perspective that they have. So I've got the light kind of streaming out of these side windows over here kind of flickering and the light in the front flickering and wow you know the fog coming in the light flickering you've totally changed the atmosphere really quickly so i've got the fog effect going uh, the cloud effect cloud effect remember i like to use the cloud on theater of the minds let's talk about the lighting here so in the lighting again uh i have angled lights. This one here is a, a 20, uh, radius is 20, the angle emission is 40, and the rotation is 320. So you remember if 360 is down, I'm kind of rotating it just this way a little bit, and it's a, the angle of radi uh, radiated angle is 40 degrees, and I want the brightness to stream all the way out. There's actually no dim light in this. This is the brightness coming all the way out. The two lights of the side, I just made one and I copied the other one. Again, this is a 40 degree rotation, is at 60 degrees, and again, the brightness is 20. This is all the exact same light. What I used here is the fire, and I just faded the fire from orange to 
whatever, they're not synced. I didn't want to sync them. I wanted to make it look like there was maybe some candles and maybe a chandelier in the church that was radiating out this light. And it just by putting them here, you can see the angles coming out here and the angle coming out here. I noticed how this was kind of lit up uh, in the original photo. Uh, I could, you know, you could put a moon up here if you wanted to. I probably won't. Let's take a look again from the player's perspective. And you can just see this this light kind of flickering out of the, the, the windows to the, the, the side windows and the out windows. And now you're telling that story. You're right into it. You don't have to go into there's fog and there's light. They, they see it. And now you're spending that time talking about the atmosphere and the tone and you're engaging in your role playing, which that's where I like to jump to. I like to jump to the interaction right away. And, if you've watched my session, I'm trying to work on my, my different voices. I'm not doing too good of a job, but I'm, I'm improving a little bit. But really pulling those characters into role-playing because Dungeons & Dragons is a role-playing game. We spend a lot of time role-playing. And uh, Curse of Strahd is an amazing adventure with so many different interesting characters and clues. And these theater of the mind maps really set the atmosphere. So anyway, I hope you like this video. I've put some links down below. I've mentioned the two modules that I'm using in this particular one, the FX module, the Dancing Lights module. And um, I hope you enjoy. May all your uh, roles be a critical 20. And if they are critical ones, you know what I'm going to go, you know what I'm going to say? That's right. Think about a critical failure table. You don't have to, but that's just my little two cents. Anyway, have a good day. Until next time, this is Parm King signing off.